So, with regards to my squash particularly, it's becoming obvious what the winners were and what the losers were. And I'm just going to talk about the winners mainly here because we have one resounding winter squash winner for this year. And I didn't, I didn't go too crazy this year with getting much exotic varieties, but all my Waltham uh, butternut squash didn't really function, and uh, I don't remember what else I had, but I had like several varieties of that, and then a butternut, and then uh, something else. Who knows? It's dead. Long dead. Never even got past day one because rodents, you know? But you know what withstands rodents? things that germinate a little faster. So that's probably what happened here. I'm thinking these guys germinated before other ones and just happened to stand the test of time. But this is a uh, green Hubbard squash, right? And I've had good experience with these guys in the past anyway. And this one's already a reasonable size. This is not bad. I'd be happy with this if it was like this, but it's probably gonna get uh, some three to five times bigger than that. It really just depends. It could go a while. It just depends on how long the vine lasts over here I have its oh, cousin over here growing off the secondary vine or it might be growing off that other se separate vine over there but a few few days younger at least like three or four days younger than the other one but doing good healthy growing hanging out over there not even resting on the ground too much which is nice and this is the newest little one from another vine so it looks like we're getting about one per vine here and uh, looks good, a little bit, you know, rugged down there. It was out in the walkway, probably got stepped on by me and deer, for that matter, because the deer like to wander through here. And uh, it's possible we might get another one on this other vine that was over here, because I saw a female growing over there, but we'll see if it gets fertilized, and it will be a very small one if it does come along. So I'm noticing that the uh, flowers and blooms are starting to suffer. The rest of the plant can tolerate that for a while, for another month or two, you know, give or take, whatever. Flesh out these, but it looks like we're gonna have a solid two to three off of these three to four vines that grew out of a packet. And the packet probably had 15, 20 seeds in it or something like that, you know, whatever standard. These are sizable seeds, so it's by weight. I believe it might be a smaller amount even, for all I know. So not bad considering I did nothing. I dug a hole, I threw some blood meal on it, because that keeps the deer away a little bit for a short period of time. And and mice, I believe. They don't really like it when there's a bunch of blood there. Smelling that, you know. And I uh, just put the seeds in. I never watered anything. It rained. It was a rainy season at that time. It was still in late May. May in general, just May, you know. Early June. And uh, performed well. So, as of this year... I'm going to be keeping seeds from these, and I'm going to be exploring other seeds. These were isolated, so they really do have just their own, um, and these were heirloom, so that's another good thing. We'll get some good seeds out of these guys. This is a sturdy, uh, sturdy specimen, so you know, that can handle this. So next year I'll be doing it again with seeds from these guys, producing even more seed. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to develop some seeds that I could use that are a little bit more nativized, a little bit more rugged. I want them I want them to have some good growing qualities that allow for minimal consumption of resources when and energy for that matter, labor even when when growing them because what's I don't know. The nature doesn't require labor, so it's like I shouldn't too much, you know. And and then labor should be that all that I really require. I shouldn't have to like have complex irrigation systems and other excessive oddness because I mean you can do that but you shouldn't have to you know what I'm saying like it should it should be like dry farming generally but maybe you do dry farming plus and etc etc whatever but yeah this one doing good honestly I think I might have even gotten slightly better results but this is in a slightly shaded area which has its benefits and its uh, detractions so Good to know. Good, a uh, good strain. What do they call it? A. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm so terrible with names. I do this to people too. I'm like, what's your name? What is your name? It is the. Uh, I don't know. It'll be on the title of the video. This guy, dude. Get you some of these. Uh, they've I've, they've served me well, like 
four different times, you know, that I've done it. And then this was a couple years in a row recently, so it's a good, um, and then under the, the worst of conditions like this, where I just did not take care of them, they still perform well. Hubbard, green Hubbards, and then Hubbards, there are Hubbards of other colors, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, pretty awesome. They have really big ones, yeah, so try them out. This is definitely me supporting heirloom Hubbard squash. Try some when you get a chance. Anyway, thank you guys. Have a good one.